Friends, welcome to our shortened pre-recorded service for October the 18th of the year 2020. We are so happy that you have decided to join us today in this time of worship, discernment, reflection, and prayer. Today, we will not be offering our live streaming option. This is because we are now taking steps where we are learning new ways to hopefully come to a more permanent solution with our live streaming. We hope that you will bear with us in patience as we take these steps to ensure quality in the future. So today we do offer this pre-recorded service. And before we begin, I'd also like to note that at the end of this service, we will also be posting up the announcements that you might normally find within our bulletin, since you do not currently have access to our bulletin. But of course, you can always find that on our website at fpcbryan.org. If you go there and you look under worship, you can click bulletin and see a full version of what our service for today would look like should you have been here in the sanctuary with us. So friends, before we begin today, I'd like to open us in a prayer, a prayer for illumination. This is a prayer that invites the Spirit to be with us and to bear with us in this time. So let us pray. Holy Lord, take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 40. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. And I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Now then the righteous will answer him, But Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will then reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a familiar text to so many of us. And when I read this text, there's actually a singular word that comes to my mind. And it's a little bit unusual because it's not an English word, but rather a Zulu word from South Africa. And that word is Ubuntu. I'll say that again, Ubuntu. In South Africa, which is a place that has been torn apart by apartheid, they continue to heal through the wisdom of Ubuntu. The story of Ubuntu goes like this. An anthropologist once proposed a game to an African tribe of children. And he placed the basket of sweets, you know, candies and fruits, underneath a tree. And then he had them stand a few hundred feet away. Now, whoever reached the basket first could get all of the sweets. So when he said, ready, set, go! Do you know what these children did? It's amazing. They reached out and they held each other's hands, and they ran together towards the tree, and they sat down, and they divided all of the sweets equally among them. And then the anthropologist, he asked them why they chose to do that, and they replied, Ubuntu, which to them, that means how can one be happy when all the others are sad? How can one be happy when all the others are sad. It turns out that the word Ubuntu in South African ethical ideology, it it focuses on people's allegiances and relations with each other. The word comes from the Zulu and Sosha languages and is regarded as one of the founding principles of the new Republic of South Africa. A rough translation of the principle of Ubuntu is, 
I am because we are. Isn't that beautiful? I am because we are. Archbishop Desmond Tutu explains, a person with Ubuntu is open and available to others, affirming of others, does not feel threatened that others are able and good, for he or she has proper self-assurance that comes from knowing that he or she belongs to a greater whole and is diminished when others are humiliated or diminished when others are tortured or oppressed. You know, it sounds to me like America could use a giant spoonful of Ubuntu. No, 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 no. A giant dump truck full of Ubuntu. <laughs> Maybe then we could make America truly great again. But until we learn to care for the least of these, we cannot grow as a people or as a nation into anything great. Jesus' words for us come today simply summed up, they could be the word Ubuntu. We are only as well as the least well person among us. There is a game that I often like to play with the youth. Um, it's actually, it's called Insanity. So I want you to imagine with me for a second the setting. I give each team of youth, the teams are made of two to four players, and each team gets a hula hoop. And I ask them to put their hula hoop down so that they're all in a circle. And then I take a hula hoop and I put it in the middle of the circle. And into that hula hoop, that one hula hoop, I pour tons of little tiny balls that will roll all over the place. But the hula hoop is containing them. And I say to the youth, all right, here's the rules. There are no rules. But your goal is to get every single one of these balls in this center hoop into your hoop. That means you can steal, you can cheat, you can do whatever you need to, but you have a time limit of one minute and you're gonna get all of these balls into your team's hoop. Now, as you can imagine, when I say go, it is insanity, right? They're all running and scrambling and stealing from each other and reaching into the middle one and taking their own hoop and moving it around, trying to capture all of them as they go by. And then I ask them, all right, Stop, they look around, nobody has all of the balls in their hoop. So I say, take a moment and strategize. Come up with a new plan, a new way of doing this to ensure that your team can get all of the balls. So we'll go through this for a few rounds. Usually by the fifth round, there's one of them that says, this is impossible, we can't do this. And I say, you can. Do you want me to show you? But if I show you, we all win. And they look at me like, what? <laughs> That's not how the game works, right? And usually they'll try one or two more times. And then they'll say, okay, what's the answer? And I have them all pick up their hoop and come to the center together and place all of their hoops together on top of that center hoop. And now everyone has all of the balls in their hoop. Insanity means doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. See, it didn't matter how many times they strategized, it was really the same plan. But until we learn to come together and to share, nobody really wins. There is no Ubuntu. See, that's the thing about the world. We always have enough food to eradicate hunger. We have enough water to serve everyone's thirst. We have enough money to provide everyone with a shelter. And there is enough love that no one ever need to feel alone. But we haven't learned to properly care for the least of these enough to sacrifice a little of what we have for the betterment of all people. It's especially difficult for us Americans to embrace the concept of uplifting the least and the lowest for the betterment of the whole. Individualism is worshiped here in our culture. Me, myself, and I. It's all about my rights, my freedoms, my success, my car, my house, my well-being over others. And we encourage our children to do anything that they can to achieve success even if that means stepping upon the heads of others to 
quickly go after and catch that ever-fading American dream. And if we do capture that American dream, we will do anything. We will white-knuckle that dream to hold on to it. Several studies were conducted in the early 2000s between Eastern Asian cultures and the American culture by giving two sets of students the same image to look at. Now, between the Chinese students and the American students, they were given an image of cartoon schools of fish. And this one particular image had this school of fish all swimming in the same direction with one fish out slightly ahead of the school of fish, also swimming in that direction. And when asked what they saw, the American students actually identified the fish that was out ahead of the group as the leader of the school of fish. The Chinese students interestingly said that that fish was being chased by the group of fish. Now a similar study was done between Japanese students and American students, again in the early 2000s. And they were shown once more a very, the, the same image, very similar to our last one, it's an underwater scene. And in the center of this image, there's a brightly colored, beautiful tropical fish. And of course, in the background of the picture, we've got coral, we've got sand, we've got rocks. And the American students, they focused in on that brightly colored tropical fish. And they were describing its beauty and the details on it. The Japanese students, however, were 60% more likely to also mention the things surrounding the fish, even noting there was a small frog in the lower left-hand corner of the image. From a young age, Eastern cultures, in Eastern cultures, the children there are taught that our well-being is connected and that we have to work together to be better and stronger. We must depend upon one another. Now this, in Eastern Asian cultures, actually promotes harmony and more insight into contextual understanding. In American culture, young children are not taught this with as much emphasis, but are more encouraged into individualism, individual thought, thinking logically for oneself and what will benefit oneself to set them up for success within our society. Now there's good and bad things to both of these things, but the difference is extremely notable. So when we focus on what makes us different than on what we share in common, we're so much more easily divided. I mean, look around. <laughs> we know all of this to be perfectly true. Just look on the news. We praise the rich and the beautiful, and we shun the least of these. Our problems persist and grow because we cannot embrace a better way in grace and sharing for all people of all walks of life. This year in America, 23% of households have experienced food insecurity. That's almost one out of every four families who cannot feed their children three times a day. One out of every six children in America lives within one of these food insecure households. Now, of a class of 30 students, five of them do not know if or when they will eat. And if they do get to eat, they don't know what they're going to get when they do get home. Homelessness in the year 2020 across the United States was projected to grow by 45% from January of 2019 through December of 2020 due to the economic effects of the coronavirus. With wages having stayed stagnant for the last 40 years and rent, daycare, and grocery prices constantly rising, it's no wonder our children are hungry and our people are homeless. Just two years ago in 2018, it was reported that 1.5 million students in America, that's children from pre-K through 12th grade, have experienced homelessness within that year. 1.5 million students. That number has been steadily on the rise in recent years, increasing by 15%. Did you know that it's illegal in certain states to be homeless with children? That forces many children into foster care situations. 
We think it's rough right now having our children adjust to online learning. Can you imagine the stress even in a regular year of being a child and having to adjust to not being in your home, to not being with your family, to being in a shelter situation? Now, in the year of 2018, one of every five adults in America was experiencing mental illness. That's 47.6 million adults. Of those who committed suicide two years ago, 46% of them had been formally diagnosed with a mental health condition. 90% of those who committed suicide that year had experienced the symptoms of mental illness. This year, one in every 10 adults is specifically experiencing regular feelings of anxiety, depression, or extreme worry. And honestly, due to the lack of access to hospitals and health care this year, I think that that number is grossly underreported. Now, these are only a few issues that are plaguing our society at this moment. I didn't even go into mass shooting, racial issues, sexuality, or gender issues, or drug use within the US. America has a sickness, and we persist with insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again, we expect a different outcome. And now more than ever, we are being forced to see our division. And that's part of why we're all so exhausted all the time. It's hard for us to look at something so ugly and not know what to do with it. Imagine people that have to deal with these things every day. So many of us are so lucky we can just turn off the news. But there's also those who cannot. Real change begins with us. There's a helpful saying that I learned as a child. I am third. God, others, self. If we prioritize our love and our actions in that order, God, others, self, then we might just discover a love like we never even knew possible. God made us brothers and sisters connected to one another in more ways than we could possibly know. And when we care for others, we find that we are cared for as well. And that's when we can grow to truly be great. Imagine, if you will, that we all took up this way of being, the Ubuntu, I am third way of being. The world would be a friendlier place. The world would be more similar to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, which runs on a system of grace and love and mercy. Jesus came so that we might know true liberty, true freedom, and that we would find that freedom in the love of God, for God and for others, and in ourselves. I am because we are. The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So friends, what can we do for Jesus today? Maybe we can start by putting ourselves third or living into Ubuntu connectedness. And maybe then we will know what it is to be well and to be loved. So Christians, let's be the love that Jesus wished to see in this world. Let us be Ubuntu together. Amen. Friends, let us pray. Loving, merciful, and almighty God, we give you thanks that you reach toward us in the spirit of Christ to wake us up. You open our eyes to see. You open our hearts to love. You open our thoughts to your desires. May we see you in the stranger. May we recognize that the other could just as easily be us. May we choose to step up rather than to walk by. 
Let us not dilute your word with excuses and desires of our own. Let us not pollute an already suffering world with our own biases and areas of ignorance. We hear you calling us to a better path of love, grace, and mercy. In the ways in which we are able, Lord, may we be servants in kindness and humility. Prompt us to know the ways that we might live a lifestyle of the way of Christ. We pray this not only for ourselves, but for those who lead us and for those who are fellow citizens and community members with us. For the homeless, the weakened, the downtrodden, the hungry, and those in life's final chapter. God, we pray that you are present with them by helping us to be present with them. For the imprisoned, the bound, the deserted, and the desperate, God, give them strength and love through all those who are neighbors near and far. As the church, we pray for a better world and know we are called to create a better world by walking in the path of your light as servant people. Lead us in the paths of your righteousness that we may know you more fully with each hour of each day, always in communion with you and with the great company of the faithful who have gone before us. We pray all this and more in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us go forth today and always to be an Ubuntu people, caring for one another, all of God's people, in the name of that one who is always sovereign Son and Spirit. And we say together, Amen.